Hello. I'm Governor Mike Castle. This year, we celebrate the bicentennial of our United States Constitution. We honor not just a document, but an idea, a concept that has held together our great nation for 200 years, yet resilient enough to make sense today to a society that constantly changes and challenges us. The United States Constitution was written during a time of economic depression and political confusion. Under the Articles of Confederation, individual state governments operated autonomously, creating their own armies, issuing their own money, and developing their own rules for interstate commerce. For these reasons, and by virtue of size and location, Delaware had a vital interest in seeing these responsibilities transferred to a strong federal government. Delaware is recognized as the first state whose citizens wisely saw the urgent need for change and mustered the spirit and courage to send up the first signal for constitutional revolution by signing the first ratification document. Delaware has preserved 12 remarkable documents that led to the ratification of our great United States Constitution. Watch now as this celebrated story unfolds. It all began in 1786 at the Annapolis Convention, where delegates from Delaware and four other states met to discuss the problems created by the Articles of Confederation. But the convention ended abruptly. After only three days, the delegates decided that the only way to solve all the problems that the Articles had created was to involve all 13 states in a convention to revise the old Constitution. They would call it the Constitutional Convention. John Dickinson, Delaware delegate and chairman of the Annapolis Convention, wrote a report and sent it to the legislatures of the five states that participated in the Annapolis Convention. The report emphasized the need for an overhaul of the Articles of Confederation and called for the Constitutional Convention to be held in Philadelphia in May of 1787. Meanwhile, Delawareans were experiencing serious financial difficulties when paper currency became scarce. So to protest their plight, a number of petitions were drawn up, pleading for the upper house of the General Assembly to issue more currency. But to no avail, and the urgent need for a new constitution became more and more evident. Ironically, Charles Thompson, secretary of the Continental Congress, wrote a letter to Delaware supporting the call for the Constitutional Convention, even though it would revise the very government that he served and possibly cost him his job. Support for the Constitutional Convention continued to gain strength and momentum. In a resolution, Delaware's General Assembly appointed George Reed, Richard Bassett, John Dickinson, Gunning Bedford, Jr., and Jacob Broom as delegates to the convention. So it happened in May of 1787. 55 delegates representing all 13 states arrived in Philadelphia to revise the Articles of Confederation at the Constitutional Convention. The delegates were a combination of available political leaders, a unique assemblage of 30 lawyers, 13 planners, three doctors, and several ranking officers. They discussed representation of the House and Senate. They made major compromises on slavery and other issues. But most importantly, they emerged four months later on September 17, 1787 with an extraordinary document, a totally new proposed constitution that was based on a brand new concept. Ratification would be made by the people, not the state governments. George Reed left with a copy of the proposed constitution and shortly after he arrived home in Delaware, sent it to Delaware President Thomas Collins along with a report signed by Convention President George Washington, whose signature added credibility to the document. Today, that copy of the proposed Constitution is one of only seven original copies still in existence. Collins, in turn, sent the copy and report to the General Assembly for approval, with a letter strongly supporting the new Constitution. Yet, members of the state governments weren't the only ones who approved the new Constitution. The people of Delaware perceived the document as an answer to their political and economic problems. So to show their support, they gathered a number of signed petitions and sent them to the General Assembly. In response to the overwhelming enthusiasm for this new constitution expressed by the people, the General Assembly resolved that 10 delegates from each county be elected to meet in Dover 
for Delaware State Ratifying Convention on December 3rd at Patel's Tavern. The General Assembly informed the elected delegates that the state would reimburse them for their expenses. Imagine seeing accounting department forms like this today. Let's see. Parchment and paper cost 11 shillings, 10 pence. That's about $30 in today's money. Not a bad price, considering that the parchment and paper were used for the ratification document. Unfortunately, documentation of the convention's official proceedings has been lost. But it's clear that all 30 delegates quickly and unanimously registered their support of the new U.S. Constitution. Quite an amazing feat, considering that Delawareans almost always disagreed strongly, sometimes violently, on most political issues. So on Friday, December 7, 1787, Delaware became the very first state to officially approve the new Constitution by signing the ratification document. After Delaware courageously took this first stand for the new Constitution, other states followed. And by September of 1788, 11 states ratified, actually two more than needed. Later that year, the Continental Congress put the new U.S. Constitution into operation and ended its own life. By the time George Washington was sworn in as the nation's first president on April 30th, 1789, our national government had changed dramatically. Today, the United States Constitution remains the most resilient document in our nation's history, founded on good basic principles of government, flexible enough to provide for amendment, and relevant to whatever issues our society has met and will face in the future. It took one small state's voice to spark the movement for change and ultimately create our great nation, the voice of Delaware, the first state.